morning, everyone. Brad and I just landed here at Yifki this morning, and uh, we're dropping off a bunch of cargo. Here at the school down there. We're dropping off a bunch of cargo for our helicopter who's gonna be coming out here to do shuttles to another location about 10, 15 minutes away from here. Anyway, it's a really cloudy day. Um, looks nice over there, but we need to go back over here. And um, just coming in here, we're not really sure how we're gonna get quite over there yet. But anyway, stay tuned. You'll find out what we do, figure out how to get over there. So we're gonna go ahead and unload all of our cargo first, position it here for the helicopter, and then get out of here. All right, looks like school is let out on a short little break to come up here. As you guys can see, it's blue skies behind me now. Brad and I just went over the strip chart. Uh, just because it's a 12 minute flight over there, it's his first time landing in Malamunda. So this should be exciting for him, exciting for me. But he's doing great. Um, yeah, it's so much sunnier, so much bluer skies, just in, well, we've been here for about 30 minutes now. So we shouldn't have a problem getting over there, I don't think now. But let's just get started, get on our way. November Tango Kilo, taxi. Uh, Forsby 6538, November Tango Kilo, taxi, Yipki, Malabunda, 2 POB. November Tango Kilo. All stations, Yipki, 128 decimal 5, November Tango Kilo, taxi for departure. All stations, Yipki. Well, thankfully the grass, even though it's not cut, isn't too long. Hey guys, I want to interrupt real quick to let you know I'm running an early Father's Day sale on all my sunglasses and all my checklist boxes. So $25 off uh, sunglasses. They're glass lenses, so they're scratch resistant. I've got gold, silver, and also polarized in the classic type. And then my checklist box is going to be 15% off on all of those uh, backlit ones, as well as just the standard ones for piston, 172s and more of a complex piston. So anyways, check out the link below and now back to the show. Four point is gonna be this shack over here on the right. If we don't have airspeed alive, we'll stop the aircraft full reverse, max braking flaps up, going off the edge, off, pull off, turn off, E2 and master. We have power loss after takeoff, we'll pitch for 85. Power idle, consider EPL, consider feather. Enough pull off, turn off. E2, ups for 85 and then 80. Her doors, master off before touchdown. Rotating at 55. All stations, KFG 128, decimal 5. Kodiak, November Tango Kilo is on the roll, runway 29 er and departing for a 054 degree track. All stations, KFG. Inlet lights up. Condition flaps 20. Verified indicating dual harnesses. Checklist is complete. Okay. Power set engine instruments are in the green. Brake release. Airspeed's alive, continuing. 55, rotating. That helps when you're empty. It sure does. Oh, 
<laughs> There's still definitely some rain up in there, but it's cleared out overhead a little bit. I think that might be a high overcast further on out too. I'm not really sure. There's definitely rain all along the ridges though. All right, so what Brad's doing is we're heading out to this Lagai Valley out here just because it's such a wider area and it's 100% clear all the way up, all the way to the blue sky. So we're heading out here first, I'm assuming, and we're going to be doing some circling up here until we can get up to a safe altitude to cross. Our minimum safe is like 13 to 14,000 feet if we did have to go IMC and go through clouds, but I think that we'll probably be able to find a way we can wiggle our way through some so we don't have to go quite that high because honestly we don't have that much fuel as far as mucking around fuel we have enough to get out there we wanted to do an extra circuit because so, it's his first time so hey maybe we'll be able to film that as well i don't know four three one two eight decimal five november tango kilo departure oh so, keep in mind your lowest terrain to get over there is right here so okay. oh, it's like right over there is like around 7,500 and it's about 8,500 to 9,000 back there. Keep that in mind because we might find an easy way over here, but we might not too. I don't see anything up here of this particular valley. It's blue on top, but that's probably got to be at least uh, 10 or 11,000 probably, probably 11,000, yeah. Basically right here where the, the river goes, Right with that little line comes up, that's your lowest section. Well, you can even see right there, it's just a couple little bit of yellow. And when you're coming in from WeWAC as well, that's a really great way to get in and low as well. First speed 6538, November Tango Kilo, departure. November Tango Kilo departed, Ball of Monday, time 25, tracking 053. I mean, 900,000, estimated Malamunda time 3 niner. One zero zero eight, calling it Malamunda, November Nico Kilo. Happy that it has cleared out. This has saved us so much time and hassle because yeah. I was like, oh man, I don't know if we're going to be able to get over there with how much overcast there was and rain. Could have got through it around 900,000 over here, but he's taking us further off track. We'll just climb up to about 10,000 and get over this stuff. Okay. If you play flight sims and you'd like to fly this exact same route that Brad and I are flying this morning from Yifki over to Malamunda, I'll leave a link down below to my Patreon page. And we actually have um, Yifki and Malamunda that you can actually add to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 because they're not in the game. So you can add them as a patch and fly to these exact same places. The one at Yifki looks really good. I don't remember the one at Malamunda looking quite as real in all respects but it looked really good regardless and it's a yeah it's it had a lot of detail to it so be sure to check that out if you guys would like to fly some of these routes all right so it looks like we had to go all the way up to 11,000 to get over top of these and we'll just head right back down we're just about over top of this ridge i think it's going to open up a little bit more once we get over into these little lighter areas and then we should be out shouldn't have any problems getting it i don't think Coming over this direction, coming around the clouds, because I think I'll be able to start letting down a little bit sooner over lower terrain. Just coming a little bit more from this angle. <laughs> That's what I would have done too. Our landing weight, our weight right now is 5,500 pounds. So coming down here, we're at landing at 55 knots. That's already got that in there, 55 knots for our touchdown speed. It looks like there's a heck of a lot of clouds, a pretty thick layer up wow. here. What's your plan? The thought was I'd go ahead and let down at least until this layer over here. Looks like there's probably some clouds right in here, so I'm going to try to come down at the edge of those clouds. Okay. So let's look here. Right here we've got a light area, a dark area, and a light area. So if we let down here, we still have a whole other ridge to go after that, potentially. Okay. So, unless we see something that's looking super promising, it might be better to come a little bit further out and then hope for something like that's a little bit wider of a valley. Yeah. We might be able to just do a longer descent through that, potentially. I can see maybe a little bit of stuff then under here, but again, that's just bringing us into this valley here, so I don't know. I like it great. <laughs> oh, it's for getting down there. 
If we come over this ridge, I'd imagine we could let down. Yeah, I think so. Like, I'd be wanting to know what's on the other side of these clouds right here. Right there. So if we can just get right over there, we might find that it opens up and we can just dive bomb down. All right, landing runway 08. I'm going to go ahead and put the OBS in now. Okay. Run heading. As you can see that it's just turning the, the line right there with the orientation of the runway. Runway 08, just 534 percent slope. It's 534 percent slope. Uh, 530 <laughs> meters, 4 percent slope. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so if we can't land here, what's our option? If we can't land and we think it might clear up, we could head over to WeWAC and get some fuel and try it again. That's one option. Yep. Okay, so we've got how many minutes to get back to Goroka? We've got... So 67 minutes, so 335 pounds. Let's do our 320 and then let's do a circuit in there. So we need to for sure be leaving here with 685 pounds of fuel. What do we have right now? We're at 760. Oh, like we don't even have enough to like, I was thinking maybe we could go to Malamanda, I mean Mariama, which is just, like a 10 minute flight. So that's gonna be 20 extra minutes, so that's 100 extra pounds. So that means we'd have to be getting here with at least 790 pounds and we're already under that. So that's not even an option. So really our only option at this point is to head over to WeWAC and get fuel if we wanted to for sure pick these guys up today, which I know that they would appreciate, but yeah. That's if, it's, if, if it is gonna clear up. I didn't think it was gonna be like this though. All right, we're five miles out, so. All stations, all up under 128, decimal five, November Tango Kilo, Kodiak, 8,500. Three miles, three miles to the west, 8,400 on the same circuit time, four five. All stations, all up under. Oh, we're almost overhead. I can potentially come on over this direction. I'm not seeing it getting better this direction. If we came out over the CPIC, we could uh, try to... We don't really have the fuel to do that, though, because if we come out over the CPIC, we got to go all the way around here and then all the way back up. Okay. So, like, right now, we're at 750. We've got basically 50, 60 pounds before we have to go back if we want to have a circuit into Garoka. We've got 10 minutes to figure out how to get down there, basically. We also have a ridge line right here, so if you're looking up here and it's good, it's not in the same valley that we want. So we also have that to think about. We're slowing down to 80 knots, 8,300. We need to go down another 5,000 feet. I would try to position myself so I could come back around. It looks like there's not a lot. I'd be getting maybe way over here and circling way over here. I'd have my prop forward in, in case I need to go up and get out around, but then be looking for areas that have the biggest hole. That's the one I would want to go down. So let's sleep those. But I wouldn't force myself to get down unless I knew for sure that we could have enough maneuvering space to get down through there. But I think if we go down, then we'll even if we're thinking how we're going to get out of here. We've got to probably head back down the valley to get out. I'm not seeing much of a hole anymore. I'm not really much either, am I? All right, well, there's not really a massive great area to get down, though. Um, we don't have a 100%, we've got clear access to get out of this valley, so don't go below that you can't climb back out. Um, I'm not seeing, like, if we were underneath, what about this? All right, let's power up and just get out of here, and let's go over here. Oh, there's um, the airstrip. Yeah, but uh, I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to come up underneath of it because this just isn't working. We're going to have to go down that valley and then try to get back down underneath of it. So there's just enough to where it, it doesn't make me feel comfortable working our way down into a hole that we're not for sure it's clear enough underneath for us to maneuver well. Um, shoot. Fuel. 
All right, so what we're looking for here is we're looking to go right here to the end of this brown area and come up the river. I, at this time, that's really our only safe option to be able to get down. If you're a viewer and you're looking at the cameras, you're like, man, I saw like massive holes. They look way bigger on the camera than they do in real life. Uh, there wasn't enough for us to be able to maneuver, and we don't want to maneuver down into a hole that we are not 100% sure that it will work underneath for us to be able to maneuver around. And I just couldn't see enough underneath to go, yep, there's enough room to get down and enough room to maneuver and for sure basically stay down and not have to get down and then immediately climb right back up the same hole. That's just not a wise push flying if you want to live for a long time. We basically are at the top of our valley for the river. So when we start be looking this way, because that's where we want to go, and we'll determine if it's going to work. And if not, then we need to make a decision now to just head back to Garoka and pick these guys up tomorrow. We wouldn't expect it to improve here if we go to BWAC and then come back. Uh, I mean, it's 11 o'clock. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. We're almost done the traffic pattern altitude. Stunning yeah, we, we will have to come down lower to like 2,000 feet or 2,200 feet and work our way back up the valley is what it probably would be. Oh, it co totally closes off, it looks like. All right, screw it. I'll go into Groka uh, then. Yeah, it's, it gets really dark back that direction. Okay. Well, shoot. Yeah, it is. It's like, it looks like rain right in the valley or at least on the edge of it. Well, because we were basically right at our 690, but we need to get back VFR back into Garoka. We can fly at our 11, or we can go up a little bit higher and save a little bit of fuel. Pick this video back up as we're getting closer into Garoka, because we're just going to climb up to or whatever our safe altitude is and probably just go over top of all these clouds all the way back to Garoka. All right, well, we've been up here at 17,000 feet for, I don't know, half hour or so. The reason why we actually came up here, and I have to wear this because I don't have my flight bag with me today, so I'm just using the one that's in the airplane. Uh, but if you look down here, it says we're going to be landing now in Garoka at 365. When we left Malamunda, it was saying 309, I think. Our company ops require us to land with 320 at the minimum. So, rather than just kind of coming back at 11,000 and kind of just mucking around, like there was so many clouds. Vertical involved. track. And that little, quick little hyperlapse. Absolutely beautiful white blanket, but we really needed to climb up to this high, this height, just so that we could conserve on about 40 to 50 pounds of fuel in just one hour. So huge savings. It's a lot cheaper uh, to use oxygen than it is to fly low. That's for sure in a turbine. Trying to figure out if I should go ahead down now. I just had the low route. I would on Chimbu. Otherwise. I would head down, that's why I had it set up for 9,000 at Chimbu, okay. because that way you can get down underneath of it. And then from Chimbu, it's only like a 12 minute flight. But otherwise what happens is if you don't get down by Chimbu, you have to stay at your like 17,000 feet till you get to the Garoka Valley. And then you have to just dive bomb down and it's a huge okay. pain in the butt. Okay. So I think I had it set up for like 700 feet per minute or something like that. Let me go up here and go back up. Um, so if you guys are wondering, what are we going to do for our three passengers that we are we left in Malamunda? Morris V120, decimal one, November Tango Kilo. We're basically just going... November go Tango Kilo, Morris Go ahead. November Tango Kilo, Garumbin this time, top of descent, uh, time 4-7. Estimating Shibu, time 5-7. November Tango Kilo, Roger. Confirm estimate, go. Estimate Garoka times zero five. Number Tango Kilo, Roger. So if you guys are wondering what we're going to do with our passengers, our three passengers that we actually left out there in Malamunda, we're going to try to get them tomorrow. That's our plan. I know going up to the WeWAC tomorrow, so I'm going to be going near the area, and I think if I don't have too many passengers to pick up in WeWAC, then I will swing by there and pick those guys up tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll have to do a designated flight out there and back. 
Which might be an option too. Go ahead and turn off your oxygen. Thank you. Tango Kilo, 15 miles Kroger, contact Kroger Tower, 108, decimal 7. 15 miles, contact Kroger Tower, 108, decimal 7, never Tango Kilo. If you guys are interested in learning how to fly the Kodiak for flight sim, I've got a course, uh, like an online course that you guys can take. Down below there's a link. Uh, it walks you through all of our procedures that we use here. Um, if you don't know anything about the G1000, this would be a great starter point as well. I do a lot of stuff about the G1000, familiarizing yourself with it. Also, even a little bit about the MFD. So if you want to like fly some like instrument approaches and things like that, I go over how to do like the standard or non-standard approaches and ILSs and think G or just GPS approaches, things like that, how to set it up, how to fly it, how to set the Kodiak up to fly an instrument approach. So it's a really great starting point if you have not flown anything. And even if you have flown something, you're definitely going to be learning something definitely about the Kodiak. So check it out. I think you guys really enjoy it. Broke Tower, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, Goroka Tower, good. November Tango Kilo, 13 miles to run Goroka, 8,500. Estimate circuit time, zero niner. November Tango Kilo, runway 35 right, wind light and rear bolt, QNH 1017, and the second left downwind, call again left base. Circuit left downwind, call again left base for 35 right, November Tango Kilo. Well, it's definitely even a cloudy day here. It's probably going to be raining here with this many clouds already just by noon. Kind of it seemed to be all morning. It looks like there's a bunch of just kind of scattered rain showers all up in all the ridges. Well, here it looks pretty nice, but yeah, it's definitely going to be a crummy afternoon, I think, with rain for sure. This is our last flight of the day, our only flight of the day. All right, he's just now beaming the numbers. We're about 180 feet high, just a little bit, but that's all right. He's got his 20 degrees of flaps in. As you can see here, it looks like our V-Ref is going to be 61 knots with the weight that we are. So we're pretty much at our lowest amount. If you look here. No, no, thank you. Kilo, run with 35 right. Clear to land. 35 right, clear to land. No, for particular kilo. Our weight right here is about... 5,080 pounds, and down here, yeah, 61 knots. It's just about as slow as we can get. 60 knots if we had no seats on board. Just gonna just see him checking off his checklist box up here. If you guys want one of these, if you're a pilot, I've got them for piston as well as turbine airplanes. So, really great tool for keeping your eyes up and out and not forgetting any of your critical items for landing or takeoff. Five hundred. Yeah, this is looking like a really nice approach. He's right on his speed. It's kind of bouncing around a little bit just because that's how Garoka is. It always bounces around a little bit. Got three knots of tailwind. And we're coming in right around that 500 foot per mark. Our descent. Probably have a couple sinkers here as well. Not tail. Your speed's on. 100 foot per minute descent. A bit fast, slow it down. Put a wind shear. Is our normal sinker? Three knot tail. See how much more work it is coming into Kuroka <laughs> than it is to Yifki like we left this morning. Uh. Well, guys, I'm sorry that you weren't able to see Malamunda if this is the first time watching. We don't have too many weather turnbacks. Like, I can't even remember the last time I've had one. But we did today, unfortunately, which just kind of makes my day busier for tomorrow, but that's all right. So thanks, guys, for taking the time to watch. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, hope to see you guys on another one. And um, yeah, 
Maybe we can meet up in the States because I'm heading back in a couple of weeks back to the States.